The U.S. military saves Christmas on this date. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is October 25th, 2023. It is the 298th day of the year. There are 67 days left in 2023. Wow, this year's gone by fast. Probably helps that we weren't all on pandemic lockdown and that's all pretty much behind us for the most part. Just seems like this year's gone by so much faster. 2021 took forever. Anyway, it is the 43rd Wednesday in the 43rd week and the 33rd day of fall. You got 57 days left until winter. Today is National Chucky the Notorious Killer Doll Day. Everyone knows Chucky. He gets his uh, own day. He's kind of a cultural icon. This annual celebration of the iconic character from the Child's Play franchise is for all fans of slasher and horror films, and especially for those fans of Chucky and all the movies that he's appeared in. He's appeared in quite a few movies, even a movie recently, well, a couple of years back, called Ready Player One. In that movie, people go into a game, and it's just, it's a weird game, but you get all these special powers and, you know, power-ups. Well, one of the guys has a power-up, he turns into Chucky. Pretty good movie. If you've never seen Ready Ready Player One. All right, let's see what else October 25th has given us. 1940, Benjamin O. Davis Sr. is named the first African-American general in the United States Army. 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Adelaide Stevenson shows the United Nations Security Council reconnaissance photographs of the Soviet ballistic missiles in Cuba. Now, if you've never seen Adelaide Stevenson when he went to the United Nations to argue this case, it is a masterclass on how to put someone in their place while still being a respected statesman. Basically, he goes to the United Nation and goes, look, the USSR is putting these missiles here in Cuba and it's going to create instability in the region and we're not going to stand for this and this is what we're going for. Well, the Soviet Union had all kinds of, you know, first they tried to deny it and went through this whole thing. But then their argument was that the United States was at fault for flying spy missions over another country. Adlai Stevenson replied with, I have to confess, this is the first time I've ever heard that the burglar is not the crime, but the discovery of the burglar. Here, take a look. The argument in its essence of the Soviet Union it is that it was not the Soviet Union which created this threat to peace by secretly installing these weapons in Cuba, but that it was the United States which created this crisis by discovering and reporting these installations. This is the first time I confess that I've ever heard it said that the crime is not the burglar, but the discovery of the burglar. Now he had a few other zingers in there, but that was one of my favorites. 1983, the United States and its Caribbean allies invade Grenada six days after Prime Minister Maurice Bishop and several of his supporters are executed in a coup d'etat. Grenada invasion, late report. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tom Brokaw, NBC News in New York, and here is the latest situation as we now know it on the island of Grenada, which is a tiny island, as you know, in the Southern Caribbean. It has been inv invaded by a multinational force, as it's being described. The bulk of that force, about 1,800 American troops, that includes Marines and, ap and apparently airborne troops as well, and about 300 troops from some islands around Grenada. They were sent there by President Reagan from Barbados early this morning. He says at the request of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. So picture this. It's the early 1980s and the United States, along with some Caribbean allies, decide to invade the tiny island of Grenada. So a lot of people have never understood why. And like I said, there was a coup d'etat and their prime minister was executed. Obviously, things were getting a little messy and the U.S. saw this as a threat to regional stability. Now, Grenada wasn't really a household name back then but it quickly became a hot topic. The U.S. government argued that the island's close ties to the Cuban government and the construction of an airstrip by Cuban workers made it a potential security risk. So on October 25th, 1983, Operation Urgent Fury was launched. Kind of a quirky name for military operations, but hey, it was the 80s. It was a different time. The invasion wasn't without controversy, though. Many folks questioned whether it was necessary or if it was just the U.S. flexing its military muscle in the region. A lot of people in the military felt that the government was itching for a fight since they hadn't really had any
anything since Vietnam ended. Some of the sergeants I was in the army with had been in Grenada or at least were in that time and they said that a lot of the NCOs, which are sergeants and corporals and stuff like that, didn't have any combat experience. Most of the Vietnam vets had gotten out and they needed to get a little experience, which honestly is very important to a military unit. This left a mark on Caribbean history and it's one of those things most people don't hear about in history class. Now what I'd said earlier about not having much experience, that was obvious during the invasion of Grenada. There was a lot of mistakes. First of all, the 82nd Airborne was too cautious. They didn't really move across the island like they were supposed to. That's an army unit, airborne unit. They jumped in and then they kind of just slowly moved. Meanwhile, you had like two Marine units that were running all over the place, doing all kinds of stuff. They sent in about 100 helicopters to Grenada and nine were destroyed. A bunch of other ones were damaged and couldn't be returned. The radios didn't work well. There was rumors that an artillery unit forgot their firing pins, so they were useless. One report came out and said that the elite military units in the invasion, including the Navy SEALs and Delta Force, the anti-terrorist squad, failed much of what they attempted to do. Perfect example is the the Navy SEALs failed to knock Radio Grenada off the air because they attacked the wrong building. If nothing else, the invasion of Grenada definitely showed that the US military needed some work. Seven years later, they attacked Panama in an invasion there. That one went a lot smoother. So how did the US military save Christmas? Well, it comes from a joke by Ronald Reagan. He was doing a press conference and as a joke, he said that the reason we invaded Grenada is because Grenada is the number one producer of nutmeg and you can't have eggnog without nutmeg so we're just trying to stop the communists from stealing Christmas. 1999, this is a sad one, a Learjet 35 crashes near Aberdeen, South Dakota, killing six people on board, including PGA golfer Payne Stewart and golf course designer Bruce Bordelin. Now, I remember when this was on the news, they had lost all contact with this Learjet and it was just cruising across the country. So F-16 or whatever, some Air Force jets went up and they could see that all the windows were fogged over, meaning that it probably lost cabin pressure. They were monitoring where it was going because they couldn't, you know, everyone on there had probably died already. So it was just on autopilot and the jets had to stay behind it because if it looked like it was going to crash into a city, they were going to sadly blow it out of the sky. But it eventually landed in a field. There were no survivors. So sad. 2001, Microsoft releases Windows XP, which becomes one of Microsoft's most successful operating systems. That one was definitely pretty good. Windows ME was absolutely the worst. Oh my God, that was horrible. At least at the time. In 2006, Windows Vista came out. That was absolutely horrible. Movies released on October 25th, 2002, Ghost Ship. Now, I'm not a big scary movie guy. It's not my thing. I like this one. It's a supernatural horror film that sees a salvage crew discover a 1962 passenger ship floating in the remote Bering Sea. They quickly discover that the old guests of this ship are haunting the whole thing. It was pretty scary, very suspenseful. Now what's interesting about this one is the ship was actually done with special effects, computer. There wasn't much of this going on around 2002. There was, but instead of actually filming on a ship, they just created one on a computer and then used sets to film the whole thing and really you don't know. I mean, it suffers compared to what's going on in movies these days, but back then this was groundbreaking. It starred a lot of big names, Carl Urban, uh, Juliana Margulies, Ron Ellard, Desmond Harrington, and Gabriel Byrne, Ron Ellard. People, when I was younger, now I look nothing like him. He looks, he, anyway, when I was a stand-up comedian, people mistook me for him several times. I just looked it up. He hasn't done any work since 2018. I wonder what happened. Born on October 25th, 1961, Chad Smith. He is the drummer for the Red Hot Chili Peppers, who also played for the hard rock group Chicken Foot and the instrumental band Chad Smith Bombastic Beat Bats. Yeah, that's a great name for a band. Uh, he's a great drummer. He worked his way through the local club scene in Minnesota after high school. In 2012, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with his Red Hot Chili Pepper bandmates. Uh, his wife, I guess, attacked Scott Baio at a school function in 2016. Died on October 25th, 2014. Marsha Strassman. She became famous by playing Cotter's wife in the TV show Welcome Back Cotter with Gabe Kaplan. She was on MASH, she played the mom on Honey, I Shrank the Kids, and obviously John Travolta got his start on Welcome Back Cotter. 
In March of 2007, Strassman was diagnosed with advanced breast cancer that had spread to her bones. When she was diagnosed, she wrote a memoir and she discussed her life, her career, and her illness. It was published in 2008. Strassman died of the disease at her home in Sherman Oaks, California on October 25th, 2014. She was 66 years old. Some people say she died late in the evening of the 24th, but she was pronounced dead on the 25th. I liked her. She always played a very likable character. Like you, like, you know, you just, you felt comfortable watching her on Welcome Back Cotter when she was on MASH. She just always seemed like that person you could be friends with. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.